Waste your time looking back. You're not going that way. Now, before we get to sawing up this piece of wild oak, what I'm doing here, these are the belts that go on the band mill here. These wheels that the blade rides on, of course, they don't ride right on the metal wheel. These belts or what separate the blade from the metal. What I try to do every time I change the blade on the sawmill, I like to take these off and give them a good cleaning until sawdust will build up on them. A little cheap Harbor Freight brush right here will do the job on that. And I also like to switch them when I do that because one of them is on the idler wheel here and it just turns free wheel all the time. And of course, the other one's attached to the belt, goes right to the motor and that's the driven one. And it's a good idea to switch those up every time you want to change your blades and also to make sure there's no sawdust built up on. You guys wondered what I'm spraying on here. Automatic transmission fluid. That's what the Woodmiser recommends to lube up your rails with. I put this on all the moving parts, all the hydraulic moving parts. And the chain just below the carriage here that the carriage rides on. Well, I'm a few days behind here at the sawmill. I was hoping to get this wild oak done Monday. But I've had a few other things come up that I wasn't planning on doing, so I had to take care of that. Today's Wednesday, and I'm finally getting to this wild oak, and it's going to be a pretty good log, I believe. And uh, man, this thing was heavy. The wood miser, I think it's rated for 3,500 pounds to lift. And that's the first time I've ever seen this machine kind of strain just a little when lifting the log up. Some heavy, heavy timber here. This log is 10 feet long, and let's do another measurement here and check the diameter so many board feet we'll get. Now to check the diameter, I'm going to be using a Biltmore stick. Looks like a regular yard stick, but it does a lot more than a yard stick will do. And we'll talk more about this later. I'll probably do a whole video just on this one tool here for measuring logs. So going in this direction, it's 24 inches, and going by the scale for a 10-foot log, which is also already marked on this stick, we should have about 250 board feet in this piece of timber.
be some of the worst soil mill conditions I've ever sawed in here. I'm facing the sun and I'm also uh, downwind, so all the dust is getting blown right in my face. I probably look terrible right now. That saw dust is all over me. I've been eating it all morning. Not real fancy stuff today. What I'm doing is I'm sawing those white oak timbers into six inch thick uh, timbers. Then I'm gonna put them back up on the mill and cut them into tuba sixes for some uh, farm fencing here for some cattle. But that's the way I do it here. That's the uh, method to my madness. I cut six inch thick timbers as wide as I can get them. I set them aside. Then when I get them done, I put them back up on the mill and cut whatever thickness I need, this being tuba sixes. And that's about the fastest way I've found to uh, turn out lumber when you're cutting for stuff like that, when you're cutting tuba sixes or four by fours or et cetera. But uh, this is a lot different than what we usually do on this channel where we're doing live edge and slab and everything. But sometimes, you gotta change it up a little. White oak is extremely resilient. Uh, boat builders use white oak. I think it will last longer than pressure treated will if you put it in the ground or for decking. It's great stuff and it's a lot, a lot healthier than pressure treated. Pressure treated wood has got all those chemicals in it. White oak don't have none of that. So, uh, Really good material here, this white oak is. In fact, next month, or we're almost into next month, it's almost February, the small building we're putting beside the kiln, a lot of my timbers I'm gonna be using there is white oak because they're really, because like I said, they're really rot resistant. So I'm gonna keep on sawing here and flip these back up. And uh, hopefully by Monday, I'll have this sawmill put over there because this is just horrible. I mean, like I said, the sawdust right in my eyes the whole time, I can barely see the timber as it's sawing. A lot of times I'm running back and just watching from a distance and it looks like a sawmill with nobody operating it. So uh, hopefully first of the week, like I said, we'll get this one log done. That's the last one I'm doing right here. We'll move it over there, turn it the other direction, hopefully get some better video angles as well. Because the sun is hitting me, like I said, and the, and the sun is hitting these lenses. And I won't know until I get to, get to the editing process here, but I'm sure the footage is not really gonna be real favorable here. So we'll turn this one up and keep going. 